Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Let's pray. Gracious, loving, heavenly Father, recognizing your wonderful presence, so inspiring and encouraging to your children. We, th we thank you. So far, in this worship service, you, thanks for accepting us and make us fruitful in our worship to love you and serve you with all our heart, with all our mind and strength. Open our eyes to see the wonderful things in your word. Let your word, word originate holy faith, holy fear, light guidance and wisdom and knowledge in, in us so that we may get inheritance and long life. Let is your word be work as a good seed sown in a good ground, take root and come up and bear hundredfold that may be fruitful, Lord. Let it work as a hammer to break our stony parts, fire the consume the immoral filled, more sharper than any to edged bait, to penetrate into our being, dividing between what is spirit and flesh, holding the very intent of our thoughts in integrity. Let your word work as a medicine to heal all our bodily sicknesses. There may be peace and joy and tranquility in the mind. There may be a renewal in the volitional area so that all the time we may take decisions and we may resolute to follow you. And a revival in the spirit. Open our eyes to see the wonderful things in your word. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. We are living in this Kolyaru area. Definitely we cannot lose sight of it, nor without hearing about something about this Kolyaru lake, which is a renowned lake uh, to be the biggest in the world, biggest Kolyaru lake. There are times that I, I have taken my relatives and some of the church members to Atapaka where there is a very good habitat for the pelicans. And when we go to the forest department, guide will tell us that how these birds will come from a far country, very, very far, and how they will lay the eggs hatch for some times and go away when the time comes. So they are so seasonal, very, very time conscious. What is their confidence when they lay the eggs in the bulrushes of this Koleru lake? That is, the heat we have generated to some extent and the time the eggs take in order to be hatching. After that, do you know what happens? The mother birds will expect, probably in other country or in other continent, no wonder they can take their flight and cross the continents and countries. These eggs, when they are hatched, the little kids will be hatched and come out of breaking the shell. They started eating little small worms and they started growing and they started eating big fish and become very bulky. And after some time, they will recollect, where from have I come? There I should go. Immediately, they will take their flight and go to their parents in that continent. What a wonderful thing. Shall we give a clap? For that, dumb birds, which have no idea or intelligence at all, how really they are mindful of their own country and their own parents. That's a wonderful thing. In the, through the animal world, our Lord is teaching us many, many wonderful things. So, Jesus, when he is setting out to villages and towns and uh, the cosmopolitan cities and to the synagogues and to the seashore, so formal and so, so informal sometimes. So formal means in the synagogue he used to preach, in the temple he used to preach. Sometimes he go to the houses and preach the gospel. Sometimes he is taking them to the seashore in the beautiful ecosystem. We should learn from our Lord 
not simply 365 days confining to the four walls that will lead to depression i tell you monotonous thing is sometimes dangerous we need a break take a break go out and have a fresh breeze have the glimpse of the beautiful ecosystem the greenery do you know that when you view more and more the green the eye will refresh its functioning see the eyeball will be refreshing so our mind also need some relaxation and relief not all the time working for our livelihood what for we are living in this world we are not living to eat we are eating in order to live so that we live in order to inherit the kingdom of god therefore we for everything there is time there is time for your work there is time to eat there is time to sleep there is time to relax there is time to confine to the house and closets there is sometimes time to go out and have the glimpses of this wonderful world then you will have a broad spectrum of the beautiful creation and the vast and so big sometimes look up by god only says lift up your heads and see who has created and he asked abraham can you number the star the stars of the firmament in the heaven my goodness i cannot number lord do you know at what time jesus asked visited abraham and even asked him to look up his years are going away without bearing a child that is his discouragement lot of inheritance and properties and riches but no children to inherit that is his discouragement one day he said what is there my lord you have blessed me abundantly with lot of possessions but there is no offspring or children to me to inherit take heart there is a time you will definitely bear a child you will also name him as isaac why you are discouraged come out of your tent tent is very very limited smaller than a house isn't it they used to live in tents in then those days because they are nomadic people they want to move from one place to the other they used to pitch the tents so when he is confined to the tent his view and vision is so limited confined only to the tent so god asked him to come out of the tent the limited provision you come the unlimited expense vast expense of this space how god wonderfully created and he has assigned him oh don't look up upon your weaknesses and problems all the time there is a mighty god who can take up of your problem he can solve your problem don't think of all these things all the time there spare some time to think on how god has created this universe how what is the purpose of god in creating you how loving is he how caring is he how wonderful and mighty is he bigger than your problem so he has given a task and an assignment so that abraham can look up and the assignment is to number the stars how many stars he could have i mean he might have counted <laughs> we don't know but one thing he might have said lord how can i know how many stars you have created because today we have more astronomical knowledge just in milky way galaxy itself there are 2.5 trillion solar systems in that there are billions of solar systems in this universe so when we god knows that we cannot number and know but still he has given the assignment what for so that there may be a change psychologists all the time says if you are thinking of a problem all the time that will lead to depression take a break be re relaxed and change your thinking to the negative to the positive thinking then there your mind will have some rest and relaxation that is the thing then god promised abraham don't worry i will solve your problem i will provide to you a seed then he set out to the promised land he pitched his tent and god asked him to move to and fro that is toward eastern western north and southwards and finally when god has promised seven nations as a promised land he pitched a tent he pitched a tent not a building structure like this because he is our spiritual father of faith god led him in that way so 
according to hebrews chapter 11 verse 10 Abraham was waiting for a city which has foundations whose builder is God the maker and builder of the heaven is God therefore even though in spite of inheriting such a vast promises and inheritance of seven nations as a promised land he pitched just a tent a temporary house not a permanent house that means all the time whenever he is going into the tent coming out of the tent i am just a tent dweller a temporary dweller here there is a temporary there is a permanent abode and permanent inheritance a city that has foundation which cannot be shaken by the earthquakes which cannot be devastated by the cyclonic havocs there will not be any evil in that city god is the center of that city so in this wonderful way god encouraged abraham so he wanted to encourage his disciples in the same manner the time came that jesus has to go to the father after uh, completion of its mission and the task which is instruct uh, i mean entrusted by the heavenly father to him going to the cross dying on the cross buried and after that he will broke the sting of death swallow the death and come alive from the tomb and he will prepare the believers to the heavenly flight and go to heaven and prepare a place for us and again he will come and take us so that we can be with him eternally so that is in this instru uh, instruction and the introductions uh, of this message so he wants his believers his followers his apostles his ministers of god to be strong in their faith and to have a glimpse of the heavenly abode that they are going to have and god who came and visited them from heaven and jesus who ascended into heavens he is also going to come uh, having prepared a place for us and he will take us to heaven so that we can be with him eternally let us give a big clap and be relaxed yes that's nice so there are just four things importance to have peace in our life why he is talking about peace in chapter 13th chapter jesus was talking that he has to go to the heavenly father no sooner he started talking about going jesus to the heavenly father without mentioning their accompanying they started worrying if jesus is going who will take care of us as long as there is jesus people will come then what is their problem how we are going to eat if jesus is there people will come and give some offerings if jesus goes if they look at us you know what they will bring for us for god service so their livelihood is at stake in their thought it is not really at stake is it it uh, leela yes their livelihood is not at stake because he who has called them he who is feeding a raven and the bird you know he doesn't bother about tomorrow's food because you don't have a field to till the land and sow the seed and reaping the crop and uh, winnowing them and preparing food it doesn't worry because jesus said consider the raven the birds who is feeding them the heavenly father is feeding them so he is taking care of such an ugly bird like raven కాకి లాంటి పనికి మన దృష్టిలో ఉపయోగం లేనటువంటి అగ్లీ బర్డ్కి అన్నం పెడుతున్నాడు రేపు పొద్దున దానికి ఏమి దొరుకుద్దో తెలియదు అయినా విచారంగా లేవే ఎంత హుషారుగా ఉన్నాయి సో వై యుఆర్ విత్ లాంగ్ ఫేసెస్ అండ్ ఫాల్ అండ్ కౌంటెనెన్స్ వాట్ ఈస్ దిస్ సో జీసస్ ఈజ్ ఎంకరేజింగ్ దెమ్ దట్ హ్యావ్ పీస్ ఫస్ట్ డోంట్ వరీ ఎ మ్యాన్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ సెట్ every hazard is an uncertain quantity that is every worry we cannot measure it it has no measure for everything there is measure but for worry there is no measure it is uncertain quantity you cannot measure it but with your worry you will double it what happened worry will bring to make another weight that's all it will increase the weight of the burden so don't worry jesus said by worrying what you are going to get except i cannot work today 
I cannot go to my job. I want to apply leave. Children will expecting. Mummy will make something. God will guard. Uh, Daddy will bring some good foods and edibles. Daddy and mummy are worrying for certain certain things. He did not go anything, and the children are really it's suffering a lot. Till now, it is just uh, one o'clock. You did not go to the oven. You did not make any provision for our eating. By worrying, you will be inactive. That's all. Worry is very, very bad thing that comes from the devil. Peace comes from God. Jesus said, "I want to give my peace to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Not as the world giveth. People want to find out some relaxation and peace and joy by taking some drug. I am worry, worrying a lot. Therefore." just a peg of alcohol today very easy a drug youngsters girls and boys also i am telling be careful in your college or university if anybody wants to in previous days there is something to eat or swallow and get some kick and intoxication and some relaxation today no need of eating or putting anything in your mouth do you know that there is a liquid if somebody can just touch your hand if somebody can smell it that's enough it will catch you many doctors are addicted today many medical students are addicts of drug many many people because their drug is available everywhere ekkada untayo telusandi oka mama garu muslim laaga chakkaga naage em telidu annattu medalakunda she will sit in her bunk and selling cigarettes and some pan and some kind of biscuits and this and that that fellow is possessing a packet of drugs you don't know that that is why the youngsters are around that kind of bunks that kind of dickies because they know where the drug is available so today the most dangerous thing is if anybody ask you are re re hey abba you please smell it it's a very good smell that fellow is already an addict of the drug he and she wants to spoil your life so the world is very very dangerous world people are perishing not because of violence and theft and this and that they are ruining their own life with their own hands once you smell it that's enough remember my word as a god's word don't smell anything don't put in your mouth anything without knowing of it if anybody a stranger says you please have my snack in that biscuit there may be drug you don't know it is more more highly polluted than you and i can perceive to have peace but jesus says let not your heart be troubled let my peace rule over your hearts so jesus promised the peace let us enjoy in the face of a trouble i am telling you when everything is hostile not everything is so comfortable and positive but when everything is tumultuous very 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 everything is tempestuous hopeless at that kind of situation have peace let peace rule your heart and mind the beautiful thing is the psychologist tip change shift is the solution what is the shift shift your thinking from a worried thing which is really pushing in you into worry to uh, substitute with a positive thing take a break be relaxed don't be alone be in the company of your friends and believers share your problem with someone whom you trust well otherwise don't open your secrets it needs great trust to open your heart and secret they will play a fool of you they will make a fun of you jesus is the reliable friend tell him what is your problem he will heal you tell the god servant if you count that he is worthy tell the senior believer what is your problem they will help you and i am telling the senior believers to god servants 
and the people who are resource persons who are the counselors you need to be confidential in your life if you open the secret of any other person who trusted you and shared his problem with you god is in between the two of you don't open the secret of your neighbor when they trusted you when they opened their hearts and they shared their problem with you don't be a uh, a deceitful person be a faithful person in order to keep everything in your heart and pray secretly even in the prayer also should be very very careful some people out of their ignorance they will pray very loudly oh my brother is suffering with this kind of problem god because it is i am telling god but they and they overlook the believers are also listening isn't it so be careful there are ways how to mention the problem god only can understand but others should not understand what is the problem you are praying for your neighbor or your friend or your brother or co believer so have peace then the second thing is the instruction to put to put your faith in jesus here let us just uh, uh, uh answer a question is it not enough for anybody you know i am not an atheist i believe in the existence of god oh without god nothing come into existence he is responsible in creation and even controlling of this universe of universes i believe in god okay is it okay huh <laughs> oh joseph is waving positive head waving and uh, uh, swarup is waving in a negative direction that is swarup is correct if anybody says the the uh, the uh, the difference is the world secularly the atheist and the theist those who believe in the existence of god who doesn't believe in the existence of god bible says in psalm uh, the the psalm 53 a fool says that there is no god so those who believe in the existence of god are theists that is what bible says i i am very sorry that is what world says i take back my word what the world says bible go further who is that god to put your faith that need to be qualified and recognized by god you know if a man is deified as god and people are going and falling on his feet my goodness i heard about some gurus and babas the devotees of gurus and babas and after going there you know uh, when he is sweating also they are just taking some sweat and started licking and i came to know that when he is spitting also they are going and licking and eating the spittle of that guru what kind of faith is it in this kind of gurus after that it is proved that he is a false fellow why they are losing even some people are losing their virginity with this kind of demi gurus very very dangerous thing there are some homosexuals there are some fornicators so bible tells us it's not enough to say yeah i am a theist i believe in the existence of god but who is that god is a very serious matter today that is why jesus clarified it is not enough for you to say i believe in god then jesus said to his disciples i know that you believe in god you believe god but also believe in me then only your faith is going to be whole and accepted if you say that i believe in god but you doesn't believe that god is jesus it is contradiction in terms there are many many people who are not atheists who say that they are theists so called but because of i use these words because they doesn't believe in the real god but they are believing the false gods that is why jesus is telling if you say that you believe in god you also believe in me then your faith is going to be accepted so we don't know how god is like and what god is like 
there are certain understandings in regarding god but bible is explicitly says god is exceedingly good but it is not impossible for us to have a glimpse of his shape and his features and uh, uh, his personal traits we cannot because he is living in exceeding light because of that light our eye will fail in order to figure out what god is like we can't figure out not that god is not with us but god is with us but we are not able to see him and view him and perceive him with the limited tiny mind he is infinite a finite human being how can he can comprehend the real features of god and figure out hey god is like this impossible but john 1 john's gospel chapter 118 says nobody has ever seen god but only the one who is in the bosom of the heavenly father revealed him it's true if anybody view god he will die because of the exceeding light that's true but in spite of that god wanted to show what god is and who god is in the person of his only begotten son jesus christ therefore when you come to jesus there was a time in the history of the world that people could able to have a physical view of the glimpse of god but even then they many people did not believe in jesus so never say god if you are visible i can know you i can see you i can have a touch of your feet and hand i can believe you no many people touched jesus viewed jesus listened to jesus after for some time followed jesus and after that some of the words offended them what kind of message is it who follows him and immediately they started retreating back they backslided and never followed jesus do you know that therefore don't ask god to have a glimpse of it we are not ready to see him but know who is god and what are the qualities of god recorded in the bible it is a truthful book so know jesus and believe him that son of you believed god after that you will understand it is not simply jesus there is father god there is the holy spirit god and there is jesus god the three persons of the divine trinity after your first steps of your faith life and you can go into the deeper understanding of the person of god therefore jesus says it is expedient to believe not only in the existence of god but also in the uh, person of jesus christ and his the work and the person of jesus he died on the cross for our salvation and the third important thing is inherit the heavenly mansion inherit the heavenly mansion so we are not people with a without a god we are people with a living god and true god that is the boasting of a christian not simply to boast but in his presence to humble ourselves father many wise people in this world could not believe in the existence of a true god in jesus they say they believe in god but they are not believing the true god but why you have given me such kind of faith that i have come to your presence i know that you are the true god why you have given such kind of faith and understanding to know you children i am telling you the greatest reason to be rejoicing not that some bundles and bundles of gold and silver that is laid at the feet of your person not that or a prime ministerial position it is not that the president of the top most country of in the world the america these are all not the these are all the worlds of fame and pomp and power and positions it is just a temporary and very terrestrial but what is celestial and eternal and glorious is to know the true god and to be with him in his heaven as a ruler do you know that you are a big authority if you believe in jesus because you are going to be the you are the child of god you are going to rule the nations with an iron rod remember the days will come therefore christianity means one man of god commented they are people with a goal definite goal and purpose and destination 
we have a destination we are not groping in darkness we are not setting out in a vague philosophy without a proper target before them beating around the bush we are people with a goal and purpose and and a destination let us keep the celestial city before our eyes abraham viewed it whose builder and maker is god who is going to shine forth out of that wonderful city in order to give peace and light and guidance to the universe of universes that his kingdom is going to be expanded by the human race and we the believers are going to be rule the people with justice and equity a great future ahead of us then these words are comfortable these words are encouraging but one perplexity left one disciple no other than the doubting thomas he asked lord good you have spoken regarding a heavenly mansion for us i am happy but i don't know the way to go there i don't know today in the air traffic there are altitudes vertically and horizontally how many flights are going criss cross in the american continent within a minute most astonishing fact how many flights are landing how many are on take off the air traffic is so so accurate that there is no accident but even then sometimes there are accidents that is called if they escaped one flight is horizontally going another flight is taking off there are sometimes air me uh, the air accidents the one flight will collide with another flight accidents if at all they escape it's called air miss but jesus is there take heart if you are traveling what is the psalm you read and travel what is the psalm psalm 121 are you reading and then making your journeys read it god is going to be with you in your going out and coming in so thomas father we don't know the way how we can go to heaven is it a ladder that you are going to set up just how our forefather jacob has viewed or do you want to translate us just like eliza and hano translated into glory what is the way how we can come and reach you and jesus immediately said i am the way i am the truth what is the truth a truth regarding god truth regarding man truth regarding his destination that's all so as long as you know something about god existence of god and i know that therefore i believe in god very very dangerous in the outset we had a we dwelt quite a good time on it but know that in jesus the god the fullness of god had dwells bodily apart from me you can do nothing that is what jesus said in john's gospel 15:5 therefore in jesus there is the full deity the fullness of god had come to him live in him walk in him you will go to god's house the heaven i am the truth i am the way i am the life so he gives eternal life he will set you free through the truth that you understand whenever you are hearing from the bibles try to understand the subjects because if you come to me you will know the truth and truth will set you free therefore even a student when listening to the professor the our leela is there like english lecturer there are many students sitting before her in the college so when she is addressing them and giving her lecture the students should grasp the subject then only they can produce it when they are writing the exam and excel in their vocation or a profession after going into their jobs you know some people will simply sit that is the same in the church also they don't try to understand anything they will waste the time in the church 
ए मैन हु इज वेस्टिंग ए टाइम हाउ ही विल वेस्ट he will look this side and that side he don't view the space speaker no he will open his cell and uh, swing uh, what are the messages if the phone is ting tang then immediately open oh this message and that message or he is more facing discomfort he will disturb the other person who is sitting do you know what happened today one one great thing happened to me and he wants to share so wasting the time here when i went to the general hospital there was a believer at the time who uh, used to admire me of my messages whenever there is a message he will ask and he will used to attend when the, there was a in csi program on certain occasion i went there to meet him i was asked to see him when i went there there was a board a holding in his office there there it wrote it's written like this if you have time to waste please don't waste it here if you have time to waste please don't waste it here you find out a man like you and you waste there don't waste your time here i think you uh, you catch the point huh? so try to understand spiritually when you are listening anything apply to your life find out a, a benefit from the preaching sadar why why wasting your time jesus said i am the way the truth and the life no man cometh to the father but by me so god is father in the introductions of jesus the invisible god as your father that mentioning is enough he started encouraging them in the chapter 14 first verse it is consummated climb come to the climax of their faith that god is my father i need not worry see sunil how he made the two son and the daughter sit by their sides when they are asking he is referring the bible he will take care of them do you think that we, will he leave his children to hazards and dangers and perplexities no no parent will do that they want the people to be better see the two kids in the lap of david and uh, devi so god said even regarding us you being bad you want to give good things to your children but god who is exceedingly good how much more he is going to give to you let us rely on god as our father our daddy abba we can tell him we can sleep on his lap we can shed our tears on his feet when you are praying touch and feel the presence of god he is sufficient in time and eternity may god bless this meditation for us for our meditations every blessing of heaven and earth may be resting upon those who are listening and following this message of god's love and care amen